Metaphors, what do they do? Hi, my name's Gabs and I'm going to take you through lesson two of the Literary Device Lectures. Today we're looking at metaphors. A metaphor is to compare one thing, object or person or place, to another by saying one thing is another thing. But it's not literal, okay? There will either be a written is or an implied is. I've given you some examples here. So, their eyes were stars. The night is a blanket. They were cunning cats. So we've defined the metaphor. We've looked at some examples. Let's go a little bit further to further our understanding of them. Here are some examples from my favorite poems. And if you want to know where I've gotten them from, just check it out in the show notes below. I've given you the poets and writers' names and the name of the poem. As we read them, I want you to pay attention to the emotions evoked, okay? So after every sentence, we'll pause for a second. I want you to inhale and exhale and just see what comes up. Let's read them, shall we? He is smaller than a mouse's fart. I am a vacant house. I bite power to the core. Hmm. So just hold on to those emotions. Hmm. What comes up for you? Is it humor? Is it fear? I'm going to give you a tip. When I analyze a quote, I tend to focus on three types of emotions that bubble up for me. By naming the three emotions, I feel like I'm covering all bases because sometimes a writer will be trying to articulate something that has many associations, something that's maybe a feeling that's quite complex. Um, and it might feel difficult to break down the, the complexities of this word, but if you, if you pay attention to maybe three, two or three words, then you're covering all bases. So I'll give you an example. With quote number one, he is smaller than a mouse's fart. We have humor. It's a little bit repellent and odious. And we'll come back to unpack that one further in the next part of the session. Number two, I am a vacant house. I picked up on loneliness, uh, depression, and loss. When you think of an empty house, um, it makes you think of the reasons why it's empty, which can be quite chilling. Who used to live there? You know, it has a history that wants to be spoken, but for some reason can't because nobody lives there anymore to tell the tale. Number three, I bite power to the core. So this is aggressive, it's intoxicating and formidable. You know, you can really hear the aggression behind the words. Let's analyze number one a little bit further. So this is how you typically analyze it in an exam. And I've tried to break it down as simply as possible for you guys to understand. This is an example of a metaphor. Mice are notoriously small creatures. Comparing a person to the size of a mouse implies they are small. However, the writer goes even further. A mouse's fart isn't even tangible. It doesn't even have a physical size, which is even more demeaning for the man being described. Furthermore, the thought of a mouse farting is unusual and funny, which shows the writer's attempts at humiliating the man is playful and non-threatening. So now I'm going to break down my analysis. Um, what you need to be doing in the exam is calling out the literary device as soon as possible. So notice I mention it in the first sentence. Then I start making word associations with the idea of a mouse. So I'm like, right, mice are small. Um, that's the most obvious choice. So I write it, I say, mice are notoriously small creatures. And then I use the size of the mouse to compare to the person being described. 
And then I go even further and analyze the tangibility of a fart, which I, you know, I never thought I'd be doing that, but hey ho. Then I give an added layer of humor um, to show that this is a non-threatening and playful and very imaginative way of describing a person. Notice also that I don't use complex language. I use um, a variety of sentence lengths. I'm not afraid of using short sentence lengths because often that breaks down the idea even more clearly, you know, but it's always good to use sort of a variety of sentence lengths. But at the same time, one thing I've noticed with students is they tend to over-intellectualize by using uh, the thesaurus and looking up synonyms for words like good or bad, and they end up using a word that's completely off the mark and makes the writing kind of convoluted. So heads up on that. By all means, expand your vocabulary, but if you're gonna use a word, make sure you know how the word is supposed to be used. Some final thoughts. So remember, there are 12 videos in the Literary Device Lectures. Please subscribe so you get to be the first to see the next upload. If you want to get your hands on this deck, head to my Patreon page. And if you want to come say hi on Instagram, I'd very much like that. Come and have a chat, say what you loved about the video. Um, I am all ears. Maybe even suggest a poem you want me to analyze. That would be really cool. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.